All right, so um, anyway, my name is Koku. Um, I'm making this video just um, to inform the general public about something called IMEI blocking. What is IMEI blocking? IMEI blocking is if, say for instance, I lose my phone. In my case, the phone that I have is this. The Galaxy Note 2. This is my sort of my primary phone. And I also have the, the BlackBerry 9900. That's my secondary phone, mostly like texting and um, Twitter. I mean, I have two phones. You know, some people have two phones. You don't, okay, it doesn't matter, whatever. So say I lose my phone or my phone is someone borrows it permanently or whatever. When you block an IMEI, it prevents someone from using your cellular phone on your particular carrier. So for instance, if someone stole my Note 2, if I block the IMEI, then a person can no longer use the Note 2 on T-Mobile. All this takes is a simple phone call to T-Mobile, let them know that your phone was lost or stolen and that you, you would like the IMEI to be blocked. This is not something that your provider does on their own. It's something that you have to request, at least at the present time. There's something else. With T-Mobile, they have something called the Valley Plan. With the Valley Plan, you put a down payment on your phone and then you pay the rest off in installments. So you're essentially paying full price for your phone, but you're getting a significant discount on your rate plan. So some people think, well, let me just buy the phone, put the down payment down, and just who gives up whatever what happens to the phone you know, in the future. But because a lot of the times you may owe up to $400 on that particular device, what T-Mobile will do if you have an outstanding debt on the phone is block the IMEI so it cannot be used on their network. So it doesn't behoove you to take a phone out with T-Mobile and then take a prepaid plan with T-Mobile just to use that phone so that you can kind of get over because they'll just go ahead and block your IMEI. However, there are ways around this. So if your IMEI is blocked permanently from a network, uh, there's a couple things you can do. Say you find your phone and you are, are in possession of your phone, you can actually call T-Mobile back and tell them that you found your phone. They can unblock the IMEI. The other way around this is you can simply get the phone unlocked. Let's say you bought a phone on eBay and unfortunately you bought an AT&T iPhone and the IMEI is blocked because the phone was stolen from somebody else. So now you're out of let's say five, six hundred dollars because you didn't know. So I don't necessarily suggest that you go to AT&T because you're in possession of stolen property. What you can do is take that same iPhone, get it unlocked, and then use it on T-Mobile's network. So no, you can never use it with AT&T again, but you can use it with T-Mobile. So people that are willing to purchase phones um, on eBay when you're not necessarily sure, or it's a sketchy situation or transaction with um, the person you're buying it from, you need to be somebody who's not necessarily tethered to any one carrier. So it's something that you would do if you are in a prepaid situation or you're not in a contract with T-Mobile or AT&T and you just really don't care or you don't care what's going on with your contract status. But I think that if you're gonna buy a new phone from somebody, you need to purchase the phone from a reputable seller in an eBay situation or whomever. Just make sure that the person is reputable, that they're not trying to rip you off and that you know that the IMEI is clean. This is something that you can actually ask. People that sell phones um, you know, to third parties or whomever or, or that are resellers, they understand that question. You can ask someone, is the IMEI blocked? And if they tell you that it's not, and it is, and you purchase it through eBay and you use PayPal and you're using, you know, you're communicating through the eBay system, then you should be fully protected under that. People think that they can get over via insurance fraud. So for instance, say that my phone is lost or stolen, but I decide to call the insurance company, but in actuality, my phone was something I'm just giving to my friend and letting them pay the insurance deductible. Well, here's the thing with that. Your insurance only allows you to lost or stolen devices per year. After that, you're, you know, you're blocked. So while you're trying to sell these phones or hook up your friends, if you legitimately lose or, st or have a phone stolen, then you're asked out because you're sitting here hooking up the world and you really won't be able to get another phone unless you pay full price, which in my case, my phone is a $700 phone and I don't want to pay for a $700 phone because I decided to hook up so and so up the block. When you're buying a phone from somebody, make sure that the IMEI is clean. Make sure that the phone itself is belongs to the person or that they bought it from someone who was willing to sell it to them without any kind of shady dealings going on. And you just don't want to get yourself caught up in those situations. And you know, if somebody says, you know, if you find a phone on the ground and you know the phone says somebody else's name on it, call the person up, you know, or or email them whatever information they have on there. Let them know that their phone was lost, you know, and that you have it in your possession. 
I mean, it's not cool to steal somebody's phone. I mean, nowadays people have, you know, their children's pictures on there. Um, they've got pictures that we don't really want to see on there. Notes, you know, work life situations, whatever. You just don't, don't be that guy. I mean, stealing a phone nowadays is just whack. It's like, it's like stealing somebody's purse. And I'm sure most of you probably wouldn't snatch somebody's bag or, you know, wallet. So, you know, don't steal somebody's phone. As long as you do the right thing, you'll be all right. And so that's it.